God. My name is Mark Driscoll and I'm one of the pastors at Mars Hill Church. Good Friday is the somber day that we remember what we did to God. And it culminates with Easter Sunday where we remember what God did for us. Uh, part of the issue with Good Friday is emotionally connecting with the substitutionary death of Jesus in our place for our sins. Uh, the Bible gives us scant details of exactly how Jesus died, and that is perhaps because in his day many people were witnesses to crucifixion. Now that we are lacking that kind of firsthand experience, we at Mars Hill felt it would be helpful to show you what crucifixion looks like and the beatings and scourgings which preceded were in fact like. And so we sent a film crew to capture footage. We filmed our own piece of material that is theologically based on the teaching of the Bible. And that will be the majority of our Good Friday presentation. We want you to somberly view it as if you were sitting at a funeral, watching the death of the most important man in the history of the world, the man who was and is, in fact, God, our Lord Jesus Christ. We would then encourage you to spend the ensuing days remembering specific sins in your life, the ways that you have failed to honor and glorify God in thought, word, deed, and motive. And then we would invite you on Easter Sunday as Jesus got out of his grave to also get out of your bed and get out of your house and to find a Bible teaching church where Jesus is made much of. If you're near a Mars Hill campus or an Acts 29 church, we'd love to have you join us. But as long as you gather with God's people to remember God's son, we would rejoice in that. Lastly, there will not be a typical sermon for this presentation. And if you have more questions about exactly why Jesus died and what he accomplished, I would encourage you to read the book, Death by Love. to come, Jesus was troubled in his spirit, and he said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one of you who is eating with me. The Son of Man goes as it is written, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better off if that man had not been born. Lord, who is he? It is he to whom I give this morsel of bread. At that moment, Satan entered into Judas. What you're going to do, do quickly. Take, eat, 
for this is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Drink of it, for this is my blood of the covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of this vine until that day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. I do not know the man! Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith may not fail. When you've turned back again, strengthen your brothers. Lord, I am ready to follow you both to prison and to death. Peter, I say to you, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times you know me. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John. As they walked, Jesus became greatly distressed and troubled. Stay here, keep watch with me. Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Peter, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, Jesus went away and prayed. And being in agony, Jesus prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down to the ground. priest paid Judas 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus. So he led a crowd of soldiers into the garden seeking to arrest him. The hour is at hand. 
and the Son of Man is betrayed by the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, a betrayer is at hand. Greetings, Rabbi. Judas had given them a sign so they knew who to arrest. Whom do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he, so if you seek me, let these men go. Put your sword back in its place. Those who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send more than 12 legions of angels? But how will the scripture be fulfilled? It has to be so. Jesus reached out to the high priest's servant and healed his ear. I was with you day after day in the temple. You did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Jesus was abandoned by his friends and led to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. The high priest Caiaphas then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus of Nazareth. Can any good come out of Nazareth? A rabbi. Carpenter. Tell me, Jesus, how many followers do you have? Speak! I have spoken openly to the world. I have taught in synagogue and in temple. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask the ones who have heard me what I have said to them. They know what I have said. This is how you answer the high priest? If what I said is wrong, bear witness to the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? <laughs> Regretting his abandonment of Jesus, Peter repented, turned around, and followed Jesus at a distance. I was with him. I do, do not know him. This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. I swear I was not. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death, but they found none. Are you the Christ? the Son of the Blessed. I demand in the name of the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Trust for me! He has uttered blasphemy. What further evidence do we need? You have all heard his blasphemy.
What is your judgment? He is deserving of death. Prophesy. Who was it that hit you? Certainly you two are one of them. Your accent betrays you. I do not know the man! Remembering what Jesus had said, Peter was broken and wept bitterly. <laughs> when Judas realized he had sinned by betraying innocent blood, he tried to bring back the thirty pieces of silver. But the priests would not accept this blood money. Knowing that it was unlawful for the chief priests and elders to pronounce a judgment on Jesus, they led him to the headquarters of the governor Pilate, seeking judgment. Oh, what accusations do you bring against this man? If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. We found this man misleading our nation, forbidding us to pay tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ a king. Take him yourselves. Judge him by your own law. It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? Hmm? Leave us. Are you the king of the Jews? <laughs> what have you done? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would be fighting for that I may not be delivered over to the Jews. My kingdom is not of this world. So you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born. For this purpose, I came into the world, bearing witness of truth. Everyone who is of truth <laughs> listens to my voice. Truth. What is truth? I find no guilt in him. He stirs up the people, teaching throughout Judea from Galilee even to this place. Galilee? I'll send you to Herod. When Pilate learned Jesus was a Galilean and that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, 
he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him and was hoping to see him perform some miracle. Herod questioned Jesus at some length, but Jesus made no answer, and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. After a horrible dream, Pilate's wife ran to him and begged him to have nothing to do with Jesus because he was a righteous man. <laughs> you brought me this man, and after examining him before you, I do not find him guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. Now you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas? Or Jesus, who is called Christ? Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas. Release to us Barabbas! A man who had been thrown into prison for murder and inciting a riot. Then what shall I do with the man you call King of the Jews? Away with this man! Crucify him! What evil has he done? We have a law. And according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God! At the crowds of urging, Pilate released Barabbas. Believing a lesser punishment would appease the crowd, Pilate had Jesus flogged. After Jesus was flogged, he was led back to Pilate for questioning. Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? You would have no authority over me at all unless given you from above. Therefore, whoever delivered me to you shall have the greater sin. From that point on, Pilate sought to release Jesus. See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. and crucify him! When Pilate saw that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd. Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! I am innocent of this man's blood. Crucify him! See to it yourselves. Pilate condemned Jesus and sent him to be scourged. Mocking Jesus, the soldiers stripped him of his robe and scourged him.
Jesus was crucified with two criminals, one on his right and one on his left. In this the scripture was fulfilled which says, He was numbered with the transgressors. <laughs> you would tear down the temple and rebuild it in three days. <laughs> Save yourself! Come down from the cross! <laughs> if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross! <laughs> Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us! Do you not fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we are receiving our due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Today, you will be in paradise with me. My God. My God. Why have you forsaken me? Jesus bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. The earth shook, rocks split, tombs opened. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid to rest. Since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Under recommendation from the chief priests, Pilate posted a guard at the entrance to the tomb, sealing the stone. <laughs> 